Okay, I apologize. It doesn't matter about the microphone. Will it still make us hurt that? No. Okay. Anyway, I apologize. We don't have our audio technician here, and this is supposed to be televised. I was hoping that we could get someone in the booth, but we're going to go ahead and start, and then um, if they do contact us, we'll go ahead and start televising at whatever point they, they do get in touch with us. So we will call the to order the meeting, the regular Animal Services Board meeting for February 21st at 642, call to order. And I would like to welcome Terry Welch, who is the attorney for the Town of Flower Mound. He's with us on our meeting tonight. And welcome to Citizens. We're glad to have you here. Our first order of business is public participation. And we have quite a few people that have asked to speak. I will remind you that tonight, uh, in this portion of our agenda, you have a limit of three minutes to be able to address the board. Uh, we, we're going to start with Mark Glover because he had requested that. He's got a presentation he'd like to show. So, Mark, if you would like to start us off. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Mark Glover. I live at 140 Red Oak Lane here at Flower Mound. Uh, I have, uh, I'm really passionate about chickens. I've got six and, and hoping to get, get some more. Uh, and I'm going to try to go through, I sent you all a PowerPoint, I'm going to try to go through this fairly quick because I, I just got the three minutes. Uh, the vision of Flower Mound is to preserve our unique country atmosphere, heritage, and quality of life while cultivating a dynamic economic environment. You know, we're just a generation away from uh, having chickens here at Flower Mound. This is a, a place over by Forestwood Elementary School, Black, Blackmark Farms, that my father-in-law ran, and you can see the area, of course, the chicken house there. This is uh, Blackmark Farm headquarters. You can see a chicken house uh, with the arrow, also the home of Bob Redden's at 3040, and Tudor Road used to be Garden Road. Backyard, backyard, backyard chi uh, chickens are patriotic, wholesome, and sustainable. Uh, this is a World War II, World War I and World War II poster where Uncle Sam expects us to keep hens and raise chickens as part of a sustainable effort. Uh, people are trying to get back to that. Here's another vintage uh, garden poster. And I want to talk to you a little bit about foraging for chickens. Part of the benefit of chickens, uh, them getting their nutrition, is from grass and insects. And part of our benefit is that they work in the garden and eat insects and, and do all those wonderful things. Uh, I'm going to encourage you not to cage chickens. It's also a problem in the summer in, in our heat. You wouldn't really put a, a dog outside in a crate, and I don't think you ought to uh, require a chicken to be caged all the time. These are my chickens and my chicken tractor here. Chicken coops are, are really nice. There's a lot of varieties. I really want to spend some time on setbacks. We have a big variety of housing in Flower Mound, uh, and we really need to think about the setback issue. That's one of our biggest, biggest issues. The, uh, here's an example of a site plan, which uh, this is actually, a, I think, a 9,500 square foot house. I'll give you a copy of it. In the backyard, the orange radiuses are 20 foot from the corner of the neighboring house. Uh, a property line set back makes no sense. And if you look at my slides, uh, you, you can see that clearly. A setback from a corner of a house, a neighboring house, is what a lot of cities are doing, and that uh, seems to make some more sense. Thank you very much. And we have a copy, but you're, yes, you're welcome you to have any written materials that we'll distribute to all the members. Thank you. Make sure we have that there. Michelle 
Michelle Langenberg. Is that correct? Yes. Great. If you would say your name and your address. Sure. Yes. Thank you. I'm Michelle Langenberg. I live at 2104 Carrington Avenue here in Farmland. Um, I support modifying this ordinance to allow more of the residents in Fire Mound uh, to have chickens in their um, yards. This is a quality of food, quality of life, and it's a sustainable and environmental issue for me. Eggs from backyard hens are healthier, more humane, better, and better for the environment than big agribusiness and industrial alternatives. The truth about food is quite scary, and people should be able to control where their food comes from. Um, as you saw in Mark's presentation, I think property line setbacks um, don't make a lot of sense for us. There's a lot of cities in this country that have had success with backyard chicken ordinances, and to me it's about how far you are from the next residence as opposed to off the back of your property line. So I would ask you to uh, take a look at some of those ordinances and build something that's appropriate uh, for us. Uh, we do have noise, odor, and animal at large ordinances here, so I think that the chickens are going to present a big issue with that respect. Uh, and I would ask that Fire Mound be a leader in some of these sustainable and quality of life uh, issues, and I think backyard chickens uh, can really be a big part of that. Uh, so thank you for your time and consideration of this uh, initiative. Thank you. Dale Hoskinson. Good evening, Dale Hoskinson. I live at 3008 Black Walnut Drive. So I've, I've wanted chickens for a couple of years. I think some of my friends think I'm a little bit crazy when I talk to them, but the, invariably the responses to it are, oh, I lose well, or don't they stink? At which point I tell them, well, I would probably too, and so would you if you were kept in an unsanitary state. But if you shower and kept in a sanitary state, things are fine. Uh, another one is, aren't they noisy? I think I got that the other day. Uh, yes, roosters, I think, would be considered noisy, but hens, most of the time, uh, are not. And I think the decibel level, I think we have in some of the slides that we gave earlier, raised to the, the volume of, of uh, a human conversation. So, not too bad. I, I grew up in Bryan, Texas. And my dad, the real reason that I like chickens, you know, I grew up there, he had me pull weeds. And he didn't have me pull weeds to learn to pull weeds. He, he had me pull weeds, which I still don't like to do, uh, to teach me the value of work. And this is, this is something I like to instill in, in, in my children as well. The closest we get to animals right now is a bait fish that my child, my 10-year-old beautiful daughter, won at Old Settlers Elementary. Um, my wife likes to watch the dog whisperer with us, but doesn't want the dog. Uh, so we scratched out on that one. But she's, a, she's on board for chickens, and, and it's something I've always wanted. In fact, we've tried to look for a home you know, with more acreage, uh, but the costs are a little more prohibitive. So I don't want my daughter just to grow up thinking that, that work is, is boring. So this is something we've kind of thought as a family we could do together um, and, and would love to do. I think it's also, I was watching an, an episode of Central Texas Gardener a couple years ago. I was a member of the Native Plant Society. And that's the reason I was watching it. But it, it showed a family in Austin that was raising chickens. And they had a chicken coop, and they had this three-stage compost bin nearby. And, and it all, I just love the synergy of it. It just all worked together where you have the chicken waste, which has nitrogen in it, which is good for the composting. You, you have a bed of straw, the chickens go on that. You put that into the compost pile. The chickens pull that down as they look for bugs, which helps to aerate the pile. The owners would then heap it back on top. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. You know, that's something I can do. I have a compost bin now in my small residential yard. Um, no chickens yet. Last, we, we mentioned the eggs. To me, that's, that's the last thing. And very early after the questions I, I said that people ask me, aren't they noisy? Um, don't they smell? That kind of thing. Don't you need a rooster? No, you don't need a rooster. Great. <laughs> They invariably ask, can I have some of your eggs when you get some chickens? <laughs> Most of them actually ask if I'd sell them or something. I'd probably be happy to. So for me, it's not about raising uh, chickens. It's more about raising a family. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Amy Turner. I am 
Amy Turner. I live at 4608 Oak Springs Drive here in Five Moon. Uh, we moved here about six years ago because we wanted more space, bigger yard, we wanted the trees, we wanted to be surrounded by ranches and horses and things instead of alleys and concrete. So we got that when we moved here, although we um, are more at about half an acre and not an acre. So when I was asked to think about why we should legalize chickens in uh, more urban type lots, what comes to mind is I got a cat back in August, and the only one I had to convince was my husband. So this is the first time I've really wanted to have an animal where I've had to convince anyone other than my husband why I should need to have it. Um, so kind of what I come back to is why not? I know you've heard from everyone else about the you know odor and noise and things like that. I know that when I used to spend time on my grandparents' farm, there was certainly an odor that went with the farm, but that was because there were large, large volumes of animals. Um, you know, and I can think of times when my neighbor's yard smelled like dog poop and they had one dog and maybe it got hot during the summer and they didn't get out and clean it up. So, um, yeah, I think it comes back to hygiene and just taking proper care of the animals that you have. Um, we don't have any dogs right now. I know there's about 22 houses in our neighborhood and I think we're the only ones that don't have dogs. And dogs certainly bark and once in a while they get out of their fenced yards. Um, there have been three incidences in my neighborhood of dog bites, two to my own kids. Um, and those people still have that dog. And I'm thinking the most annoying things that chickens do is really when they scratch the mulch out of the flower bed and kick it off into the grass. So really not too bad compared to some of the pets that we consider to be pretty typical and mainstream. Um, I also wanted to address the step back because of where we live, and I think we're in the same situation as a lot of people in Flower Mound, it really makes a lot more sense to consider the setback with relation to residential dwellings, um, not outbuildings or sheds, not garages. Um, I know there's a lot of people in Flower Mound that back to green belts, park areas, ranches and farms and things like that. And so putting a chicken coop up against the property line seems really logical in a situation like that. Um, don't see any reason why not to. People can put dog runs and dog houses any place they want to in their yard, as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if you have a dog run, you don't even have to worry where the property line is or where the neighbor's dwelling is. And like I've gone over before, dogs can be a lot more problematic than chickens, just depending on the kind of care they're getting and you know, the responsibility of the owner. Um, why I want to have chickens, I just think they're fun, they're amusing. I think it's good for kids to take care of the animals, different kinds of animals. Um, it's just a fun thing to do together as a family. I also think the eggs are, um, they taste much, much better, they're fresher. The ones you get in the grocery store are always a couple weeks old, you know, at the earliest before you get them. So I like the idea of being able to have my own food. To me, it goes hand in hand with gardening and composting, which I'm already doing. Thank you very much. chickens, but it is about rules. And he basically uses the story to illustrate how individuals in society pretty much live and define their own rules. And that there's two types of rules in the world. There's rules that are created by the people who must follow the rules. And then there's those rules that are made by the people who make the rules for the rule followers. And again, in his story, he illustrates a number of times how if the rule followers don't buy into the rules and they don't make any sense to them, they're going to do their own thing anyway, and it causes a lot of inconvenience and a whole heck of a lot more work for the rule makers. So what I want you to do is take this basic philosophy and this basic part of human nature and use it when you're coming up with the ordinance that we will all have to adhere to in the future. Um, a simple ordinance, a real logical ordinance, one that has a lot fewer restrictions is going to create less work for animal services. An enforceable ordinance is one that people agree with and they will self-enforce. Um, for example, on the setbacks, as people have said, chickens are way less intrusive than dogs or cats and we don't have any setbacks for dogs or cats. Um, if there have to be setbacks, please make them minimal, make them not to be with the property line but to a neighboring dwelling. Um, the logical place that a lot of people would like to put a chicken coop is near their garden by their back fence and it just is not aesthetically pleasing to put a coop in the middle of your back lawn 
or right up next to your patio when you've got your garden beds and your compost pile and everything out closer to your property line. Um, the, other, the other thing is that chickens' needs are very simple and they're not rocket science. It's pretty easy to figure out how to take care of a chicken. And you saw the pictures of the coops that Mr. Glover showed you. There's all different kinds of coops. There's no one way that is perfect for housing a chicken. They're pretty flexible. Um, so it wouldn't be complicated for chicken owners to figure out how to provide safe housing. And it's not very expensive to figure out how to feed the chickens so that they're happy. And it's very easy to ensure that they have a very hygienic environment for them. Um, so I don't think that people need to be told in great detail how it is they're supposed to take care of their chickens. Um, you might hear some negative things tonight from people, I'm not sure, but you know, I hope that whatever it is you're considering, you consider it based on fact and based on logic, and I think it's going to be a great thing for Flower Mound when we make it possible for more people in our community to keep chickens. Thank you. Now at least we're audio recording, so I will use the microphone, and please, uh, board members, if you're speaking, please use your microphones. Uh, our next speaker will be Rob Paul. Good evening. My name is Rob Paul. My address is 1916 Reserve Court here in the town of Flagman. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, you're going to hear a lot. You've heard a lot seen a number of presentations that have some facts and some numbers and some figures, some comments on the ordinances, all of which that I agree with. But I wanted to take a few minutes and try to describe to you what has changed in my family that cannot be communicated with facts or slides or pictures or ordinances. I'm the proud father of four small children here at Flower Mound. They're aged three, four, six, and eight. Uh, Eleven years ago, my wife and I were trying to decide where to start a family and raise our family, and we chose Flower Mound. And we chose it for a lot of reasons. We chose it for the quality of life, quality of education, the natural beauty, its convenient location, the list goes on and on. And really, I'm thrilled that in the time that we've lived here, it's only gotten better. Uh, with the creation of the CAC, addition of parks and trails, addition of new schools, we know we made the right decision, and it's really why we love living in Flower. Now, all these items help to offer my children something to do other than watching television, playing video games, or surfing the web. But I never would have guessed that chickens would become one of the key distractions to the things that get thrown at our children every day. We recently had the opportunity to lease some property here in Flower Mound to raise some cows. And sort of originally as an afterthought, I built a chicken coop and we added some chickens. And they've quickly become our favorite pets. We have a dog, we have a cat, we have some cows, we have a deer that won't leave us. Um, <laughs> the chickens are phenomenal. I wish I could show you the smiles on the faces of my kids as they pick up their favorite chicken, feed it some grass, or race to the coop to check for the daily supply of fresh eggs that these chickens deliver to us. Our children have learned patience, they've learned responsibility, they've learned where their food comes from, and they've learned the ability to enjoy simple things that don't emit from a screen of an iPod, an iPad, an iMac, or an iPhone. They've even shared this education and the fresh eggs with their teachers and fellow students in our local school system. Now, I had no idea that my original idea to add some chickens would turn into a new hobby, new pets, or the depth of enjoyment that we experience today. And I feel this opportunity should be made available to all responsible pet owners in the town of Flower Mound, regardless of lot size, and not just a family lucky enough to lease some property for cows. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Our next speaker will be Samantha Pierke. I raised some and even buried some. 
I will now show you why I think that, that Flower Mound should allow chickens on smaller lots. Organic gardening. The furry chickens and <laughs> Save the chickens. Created by kids and teachers of Old Settlers Elementary School. Organic gardening. The furry chickens and many other help with organic gardening. In fact, their eggs are a lot fresher and more organic than ordinary store-bought eggs. They can help with compost, too. When they eat the empty eggshells we use, their eggs become stronger and, elf and healthier than normal. The chicks enjoy it when someone digs up a grub or other bug for them to play a cheeky football with. It makes all of us happy because the hens get a tasty treat and we get rid of the pest. Sometimes the neighbors come over to join the fun, too. The chickens would play like this. Chase each other, give up, and whoever have the, has the bug will eat it. The people who helped are displayed on a world that I made. I hope, you, I hope that you have enjoyed my presentation and that it makes you understand why Flower Mound should allow chickens in smaller lots. My chickens help me as much as as much as I help them. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. All right, our next speaker will be Karen Hennam. And now I'm sorry you have to follow that. <laughs> Today, but um, this is one of those subjects that um, that uh, is very near and dear to my heart. Um, so I'm just going to tell you my personal story because you have all the facts that you need here. Um, I live at 2805 Hamlet Lane in Flower Mound. I've lived there for 20 years, but I grew up in Louisville. And um, when I was about 10 years old, I brought the most visitors to church on Sunday. And my reward for doing that was a baby duck. And my dad said, oh no, oh no, we are not having a duck. And it took me and my mom and my sister crying and crying and crying. And we finally convinced my dad that we would keep this duck. And this little duck swam around in a little, in a little mixing bowl. And we had this duck for, I, I believe, about 13 years. It was a sink. Just one duck by herself. She laid about three eggs every two days. When we moved to Austin, the duck moved with us. When we moved to Amarillo, Daffy went with us. So she, she was just a great part of the family. And so to pass that on to my own children, we bought ducks and chickens and flower mound. And the entire time, I never got a complaint from my neighbors. We got complaints about my dogs. <laughs> but you know, we had ordinances for that. And there's things I had to do to, uh, to meet those. I followed the rules. I'm in compliance. And now I would like to be in compliance with the ducks and chickens as well. Okay, now we have Bertina here. Good evening, my name is Regina Ferkey. I live at 3025 Yale Drive. I have to say, when I started this back in August, I didn't plan on becoming the crazy chicken lady. <laughs> but in this process, I found out I'm not the only one. Um, there's been a, such a huge response, and everywhere I go, people stop me and say, hey, you're the one with the chickens. And um, there have been so many people, in fact, that we started a Facebook group, and that's even grown beyond that. And we have done an enormous amount of studying ordinances and different information, different resources. And as a community group, we have come together and written an ordinance that I would like to present, a, a proposed ordinance that I would like to formally present to you. And it reads, Chapter 6, Animals, Article 8, Fowl, Rabbits, and Guinea Pigs. 
Section 6-281, Enclosure Requirements. A. A foul, foul rabbits and guinea pigs must be kept indoors or if outdoors in a secure pen or enclosure. Litter and droppings from these animals must be collected and disposed of in accordance with Section 6-242, provided, however, that the provisions of this section shall not apply to ducks or other waterfowl inhabiting natural or man-made water courses or bodies of water. B. Poultry or chicken coops shall not be located close within 20 feet of any neighboring residence, residential dwelling. C. Poultry may be kept on single-family residential lots in a fenced backyard in the ratio of three hens on lots under 6,000 square feet with an additional hen per additional 2,000 square feet of total lot area. The following restrictions apply to the keeping of chickens on residential properties. One, the principal use of the property is a single family residential dwelling. Two, chickens must be kept in a manner that will not disturb the use and enjoyment of neighboring lots due to noise, odor, or other adverse impacts. Three, on lots less than one acre, no person may keep a rooster. Noise restrictions for chickens shall be in accordance with section 34-182B1. Four, restrictions must be kept securely, oh, sorry, chickens must be kept securely in a chicken coop overnight. The coop must be enclosed, well-constructed, weather-resistant, well-ventilated, predator-resistant, well-maintained, and provide a minimum of two square feet of area per chicken kept. Five, in addition to chicken coop, an adjoining outdoor area sufficient to, take, to contain chickens on the owner's property shall be provided, allowing a minimum of four square feet of area per chicken kept. Chickens must be kept in a manner that they are not allowed to roam to neighboring properties or to public rights of way in accordance with Ordinance 6-45. Six, Six, chickens must be cared for in a humane manner with adequate feed, water, shade, and shelter at all times. Feed and water shall be kept in a manner so that it is not available to wild birds, rodents, or potential predators. I have two more points. May I continue? Go ahead. Seven, litter and droppings must be disposed of, composted, or used as fertilizer in an environmentally responsible manner. It must not produce odors or unclean conditions and be in compliance with ordinance section 6-44. Eight, portable coops, chicken tractors, are allowed but must meet the requirements of permanent coops outlined above. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. And we do have a copy of that. Thank you for sending that to us electronically. You're welcome. Our next speaker is Bridget Clint. Hi, 
I'm Jen Paul. I live at 1916 Reserve Court. Um, my husband spoke to all that. Uh, we have the four kids, and we do have chickens right now on our leased land, but I would really love to have them in the backyard. Um, you probably, if you told me I'd be standing here today, uh, even eight months ago, I would have been what? <laughs> he uh, wanted the cows first, and like I have four kids that are small, like I need anything else to take care of. Um, but the cows were great, and then I was in Pennsylvania visiting family, and he sent pictures of the chickens he bought while I was, <laughs> I was gone. And uh, of course, he works all the time, so I it defaults to me. Um, but he knows that I'm an animal lover, and so I soon fell in love with our chickens. Um, and uh, I joined the group on Facebook, and I thank Regina and Mark for leading us. I've learned a ton, and I wish that they were around when we first got the chickens and were clueless, um, and learned the hard way several, several times. Um, I just have a few quick stories. Um, recently, my uh, mother-in-law came to stay with our kids, and I took her out to where the chickens and cows were, and you know, said to her on the way, oh, by the way, um, you're gonna have to take care of these while I'm gone too. And she kind of looked at me like, I don't, I don't know, four kids is enough. Well, when we got back and uh, it was her last day, she said, can we go say goodbye to the chickens? <laughs> and so we went over and um, she said goodbye. And I mean, she was she was one over in less than a week. Um, we now have gotten some chicks and um, they're a couple days old now, and my kids, you know, uh, we are in the in the PowerPoint. Um, it's me with my four kids all holding our chickens. Um, they're the chicks are unbelievably cute, and we're hoping that we never raised any from chick that they will even love us more than the ones we got as uh, teenagers and and older. Um, but the best story I have about the little chick so far, it's only been a couple days, but I have a three-year-old and um, they're allowed to go and hold the chicks if I'm with them and he had this little chick cupped in his hand and they kind of just pass out because they're tired <laughs> and uh, he started singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and this chicken was asleep, or chick was asleep in his hand and uh, you know my neighbors came over, she also has a three-year-old and their kid was grabbing the chicken and you know but ours have learned to love animals as much as hopefully I do and I hope you can consider the ordinance and let us bring them home and everybody else to have them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker will be John. I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> I you. told my wife to sign me up and I realized maybe not. I don't have anything prepared but I'm going to see what I can come up with. My name is John Berkey. Uh, I am married to the crazy chicken lady. Uh, she started this at our house, not just in Claremont, but at our house. Um, I live at 3025 Yale Drive. One of the things that I wanted to convey to the, to the board uh, is actually, once again, something that has made an impact on my children. Um, I had this, I was going to have my daughter hand it to I'll give you a couple of copies. Since having the chickens, I am sure she was destined to have this level of responsibility and awareness at regards to the chickens, but compliments of the additional responsibility of an unusual pet compared to a lizard, hamster, turtle, even a duck, dog, cat. She had chickens and not two, not three. I think at one point we had eight chickens living very comfortably and very happily, all different varieties, and we studied them. We perused all the catalogs. My wife helped all the kids study and let us each individually pick our very own. And for reasons of you know our own choosing, but we wanted to find things, chickens that would do well in the heat, chickens that would produce. I wanted to no bantams, there's no reason to get a toy egg. Um, <laughs> but through all this, my little girl has the responsibility, not just at nine right now, but at age seven, 
I knew she had it. And together, she and I worked together and set her up with a pet sitting business. We have not been presented with any chickens to take care of yet. But she has been in charge of 290 pound Labradors as her absolute favorite customer. They preferred her, kept calling her back. She administered medicine. She picked up poop, took them for walks. I helped back her up. I think she has gained something from this. I know Travis has gained a great deal of knowledge and appreciation for obscure animals. Uh, this is the right move for Glaremount. I've heard some of the uh, considerations uh, against it. I don't think they're sizable enough to prohibit this from at least moving forward. I know that there are other facets of this decision that are involved, including planning and zoning. I say we let it move forward. I think you've heard plenty of supporting information. I hope you've been encouraged. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker will be Barbara Kessler. I'm Barbara Kessler, and I'm at 2204 Mockingbird Lane. And I don't have anything really um, a great kid's story, but I wanted to um, fill in on the food factor, which I do think, I kind of see this as part of a lot of things that, that we should be able to do is that we should have uh, really kind of a right to produce some of our own food. So um, I wanted to say I, I get most of my, my eggs from local producers, sometimes backyard, sometimes um, small farmers. And when I go to the Cop Hall Farmers Market, I mean, you cannot get an egg past 9 o'clock. I mean, you've got to get there early to get eggs. It, this is a very popular thing right now. And so I think when you couple the kid thing, you know, the fact that, that this is a, a real wonderful animal to have around with the fact that you can, you know, it's a pet with benefits and you can get a healthy egg from it, that is very compelling to me. I don't have little kids anymore. I think my big kids would still go along with it. Um, um, I don't have I don't have hands right now. I just wanted to speak, you know, in favor of it. I wanted to mention that that to me, as a kind of a foodie, I think that um, I mean it's it's important to get away from these these eggs can have twice the omega three oils in 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 a if you have a pastured hen at a house. Um, that's that's significant, and Americans really need those omega threes because they're way out of whack on their omega balances right now. If, if, if you eat any snack foods or whatever, so um, to me that's very important. Um, and I think also I know there are questions that have come up about is this um, trend going to uh, continue? Do we really need to do something right now? And I I looked around. Um, being somewhat of a journalist, I tried to find you know something that would um, convey just how big it is, and I really couldn't find anything on just backyard <laughs> chickens. I think they're sort of new, and it's happening grassroots all over the country. I did find something on farmers markets, and I think they kind of parallel. And farmers markets right now, there's 7,000 in this country at the end of 2011, and that was a thousand more farmer markets nationally than there were the year before. So I do think if you're looking, like, is this going to continue? Yeah, it's going to continue. And you know, Flower Mount gets out in front of it and does what it wants to have, what it wants to see on the books, and what is reasonable. Um, you know, I don't think I don't think that would be a bad thing. And I actually I think it's great that y'all are considering it now. So, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Sir. Okay, our next speaker will be Tom Hanks. Good evening, I'm Gerald Jervis of the 4812 Tim Review Court. And, um, you know, the, I'm just here to basically back everybody here that's been talking about everything tonight. Um, there's really not a lot more that can be said, other than I do know there's, you know, cities like the city of Chicago that allows them. We've got friends that live on zero lot line uh, properties that have chickens up there. And um, I used to work down in San Antonio, and they allow them in, in the city of San Antonio. Uh, it was kind of neat to see the chickens running around, around businesses and whatnot that I, I would frequent um, uh, as, as part of my work. <clears throat> but also, 
when we <clears throat> think about the, the other side of things with the, 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 the negative sides, that, you know, I have dogs who are had to, uh, we just had to put one down unfortunately, but they, you know how you get so close to an animal, a dog or a cat, you really truly do get that close to chickens as well. I've seen it. Um, so they're, they're just as much of a pet as anything else, uh, let alone the, the, the other benefits. So really don't have enough to last out my whole three minutes like everybody else did tonight, but that's all I really wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Thanks for sharing. Okay, our next speaker will be Tanya Tolson. Goodbye. chickens uh, for several reasons. The first one being so that my kids can have a fun, easy, and quiet pet. I have three kids that um, their age is um, in the range between 5 and 16. And we have been around chickens before. In fact, we stayed on a very small lot in Austin, Texas, where the owner lived on the same piece of land and had a coop right next to the um, apartment we were in, um, we never heard the chickens, and there was not a fence around the front of the yard. They could have easily escaped out on, into the busy street, and they never did. Um, we had a very fun time watching them. They are a riot. Um, my oldest son, who's here tonight, who's 16, is um, really in favor of it as well. He's a teenager. Um, I would love chickens so that we, um, as a family, can reap the benefits of healthier eggs. Um, and the third thing is that um, I would like to reap the benefits um, of the wonderful lawn and garden uh, fertilizer that they provide. Thank you. Thank you. Said I'm 16 and all four uh, backyard chickens. I guess that's really all I have to say. So. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I just came to support the issue. Uh, I'm very much in supporting the issue of having chickens in the backyard. But, um, um, I see no problem at all. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Participation for this evening. The next item on the agenda is board commission member announcements. I have one quick announcement, and that was January 17th, Member O'Mara and I attended the uh, town board chair and vice chair meeting. There was a recap of all the board activities for 2011, and there was discussion of the, some of the agendas and items that are going to be coming up in 2012 and there was some discussion of possibility for us to have some joint meetings to with other boards and we'll, we'll be talking about that later. But does anyone else have any announcements this evening? There being none, we'll move to the next item on the agenda which is a training session. The town attorney will conduct a training session for the Animal Services Board on board meeting procedures, including but not limited to Robert's Rules of Order, general parliamentary procedure, closed sessions, meeting protocols, public hearing format, and issues related to public information 
and all matters incident and related thereto. This will be a question and answer session for board members and the town attorney. So if we can welcome our town attorney, Terry Welch. 